Hi, you're watching Floyd Steinberg's YouTube channel. Some weeks ago I showed you how to use Windows VST plugins on the Raspberry Pi 5 and what to expect performance-wise. Today let's take a look at the performance running Linux and open source plugins. And if you think that's interesting, please join me in this video. Here we go. For this video, I bought a Hi-Fi Berry DAC and ADC, which adds stereo audio in and out to the Pi 5. Installing it wasn't quite as straightforward as it used to be, for the Pi 5 has an active cooler, which required me to use an adapter to push the audio board onto the GPIO port. Also, driver installation required some extra steps, so you have to jump through some web pages to get it to work. I then downloaded Reaper, which is a powerful and professional DAW. Get the Arch64 build, unzip it and run the install, it's really straightforward. Next I decided to revisit Surge XT and Zinnet Zapifex. These are powerful synths that require you to compile them on the Raspberry Pi. Last time I did this I encountered a lot of problems, but this time, May 24, compiling was no problem at all. The only things you need to be aware of is that Surge wants you to set the LV2 flag when compiling and Zinnet Zapifex needs a flag that turns off demonstration mode when configuring the compiler. These things are mentioned in the fine print, so you can now press like and subscribe because I just saved you roughly one hour of waiting for the build to finish and then discovering you need to do it all again. Next open Raspbian's package manager and search for LV2. Install everything you find there and you'll have a nice foundation to start making music with. Now launch Reaper. The DAW will scan and install all your plugins. Now it's time to deal with latency problems. By default, Raspbian will run Pulse Audio, which is a horrible audio system for electronic musicians. And to be honest, for this video I was a bit tired of researching how to revert to Jack and Alsa, so let's roll with Pulse Audio. As usual, you can reduce latency by increasing sampling frequency and reducing the audio buffer size as far as you can. This is possible in Reaper's Preferences screen in the Audio Options. In this case, a sample rate of 96 kHz and a buffer size of 32 samples seems to produce a result that is okay-ish for recording simple keyboard patterns. I tested in the usual way with the left channel going to my audio recorder directly and the right channel running through the Pi 5 and oh well, this is bad. Here's a USB audio interface which comes in with a reasonable 13 milliseconds. I'll do a short real-world test by creating a track with this setup. Let's start by adding Surge XT. As a reminder, here's how that went some three years ago on a Raspberry Pi 400 with 8 gigs of RAM. Yeah, do you hear that? That's the sound of the CPU being overpowered by Surge. But here we are three years later and everything runs buttery smooth on the Pi 5. Let's browse some patches and then I'll record a 16 track chord progression. Okay, I've prepared this somewhat analog sounding synth brass patch here. And here's my chord progression.
For the bass, I'm going to use the MDA JX10 plugin. This is nearly as old as the synth of the same name it's emulating. But old doesn't mean bad sounding. And here's the bass line. For the drums, I added the Black Pearl drum kit, which was the only thing that came up when I typed in drum into a Reaper's plugin filter. As my bass line is quite busy, I'm going to use a very simple drum pattern here. Let's use quantization to give this some swing. Now let's add Zenit sub effects. I made this simple patch, which is a mixture of square and triangle waves. I love this small animation of nodes running down the amp envelope curve. Let's record a short phrase. I'll also add some percussion samples, for example congas and a triangle. Reaper knows the tempo of the conga sample is different from the tempo of my song and automatically offers to adjust the tempo. Nice. I can now drag the right side of the sample to fill the whole sequence with this loop. I've added vocal and guitar tracks and will now drop a multi-band compressor onto the master track. You can listen to the bands you're compressing separately. Adjust the compression level till you find the sweet spot, then continue with the next band. Yeah, and that's it for today. Producing music on a Raspberry Pi 5. The power certainly is there if you're willing to deal with the troubles Linux audio subsystem will impose on you. And if you think this was a good YouTube video, please do the YouTube thing. And if you want to support what I'm doing here financially, you can do so on Patreon, buy some music on Bandcamp, or become a member of this channel using the button under this video. As always, Thanks for watching and see you again very, very soon. Bye bye.